darkness here below. Oh, Maria, our hope in sorrow and in woe. <coughs> oh, Maria, triumph for each cherubim. Sing with us, he said. To you we sigh and weep and grieve, O oh, Maria. Triumph, O oh, ye cherubim, sing with us, ye seraphim. Heaven and earth resound the hymn. Ave, Salve, Salve. Gracious advocate, <coughs> oh Maria, toward us your eyes compassionate, oh Maria, triumph for ye cherubim, sing with us ye seraphim, heaven and earth resound the In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Today's Mass is offered for the parishioners of St. Jude. We have a special guest with us this morning. This is Father Gerald Nabo. Welcome, Father Gerald. Thank you for being with us. He is from Nigeria, and right now he is a student studying at Boston College, and he's living at my former parish at the Braintree Collaborative of St. Francis of Assisi and St. Clair. Welcome, Father Gerald, and we're thrilled that you're here with us today. And he's curious about our community of, of parishioners who are deaf and not deaf, worshiping together in sign language, so he's very excited to be with us today. And this is an awesome parish, Father Gerald. Just so you know, these people here are fantastic. And we are a family as well, right? Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life.
to God in the highest and on earth peace to people of good will we praise you we bless you we adore you we glorify you we give you thanks for your great glory lord god heavenly king oh god almighty father lord jesus christ only begotten son lord god lamb of god son of the father you take away the sins of the world have mercy on us you take away the sins of the world receive our prayer you are seated at the right hand of the father have mercy on us for you alone are the holy one you alone are the lord you alone are the most high jesus christ with the holy spirit in the glory of god the Let us pray. God of might, giver of every good gift, put into our hearts the love of your name so that by deepening our sense of reverence, you may nurture in us what is good and by your watchful care, keep safe what you have nurtured. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. First reading is from the book of Sirach. My child, conduct your affairs with humility, and you will be loved more than a giver of gifts. Humble yourself the more, the greater you are, and you will find favor with God. What is too sublime for you, seek not. Into things beyond your strength, search not. The mind of a sage appreciates proverbs. An attentive ear is the joy of the wise. Water quenches a flaming fire, and alms atone for sins. The word of the Lord.
just rejoice and exult before God. They are glad and rejoice. Sing to God, chant praise to his name, whose name is the Second reading is a reading from the letter of, or letter to the Hebrews. Brothers and sisters, you have not approached that which could be touched, and a blazing fire and gloomy darkness, and storm and a trumpet blast. and a voice speaking words such that those who heard begged that no message be further addressed to them. No, you have approached Mount Zion and the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem. and countless angels in festal gathering, and the assembly of the firstborn enrolled in heaven, and God the judge of all, and the spirits of the just made perfect, and Jesus, the mediator of a new covenant, and the sprinkled blood that speaks more eloquently than that of Abel. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
The Lord be with you. And with your A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord. Mm. On a Sabbath. Jesus went to dine at the home of one of the leading Pharisees. And the people there were observing him carefully. He told a parable to those who had been invited, noticing how they were choosing the places of honor at the table. When you are invited by someone to a wedding banquet, do not recline at table in the place of honor. A more distinguished guest than you may have been invited by him. And the host who invited both of you may approach you and say, give your place to this man, and then you would proceed with embarrassment to take the lowest place. Rather, when you are invited, Go and take the lowest place, so that when the host comes to you, he may say, my friend, move up to a higher position. Then you will enjoy the esteem of your companions at the table. For everyone who exalts himself will be humbled, but the one who humbles himself will be exalted. Then he said to the host who invited him, when you hold a lunch or a dinner, do not invite your friends or your brothers or your relatives or your wealthy neighbors in case they may invite you back and you have repayment. Rather, when you hold a banquet, Invite the poor, the crippled, the lame, the blind. Blessed indeed will you be because of their inability to repay you. For you will be repaid at the resurrection of the righteous. The Gospel of the Lord. Recently, I saw on Facebook, I saw a video clip. And this clip was of a man. He had a very complicated medical situation, and he used a wheelchair for mobility. He had to use this wheelchair all the time. And in this clip, he talks about that, uh, what the doctors said when he was born, that he would die. The doctors have to actually said he would die within 24 hours of his birth because of his medical, complex medical situation. But here he was, 35 years later in this video, still alive. The doctor's predictions were wrong. Sometimes we think, you know, people like this, like the doctors might think, because they make these predictions, that they can have an ego, that they can think that they're never wrong. And that can, sometimes their predictions can make us feel disheartened, but we shouldn't let them feel, let them make us feel disheartened, right? God has a plan for us, and God is the only one who knows that plan. And the man in the video says, sometimes when we feel like we're not enough, we search for outside things to validate us. We want that validation from outside things. Money, physical things, that those things will satisfy us and make us feel like we are enough. 
However, he says in this video, we are enough. You are enough. Without those things, such a powerful quote. And it's true. It applies to all of us. Yeah, because we are made in God's image. We don't know fully, we can't understand fully his image. We know he is good. We know he is powerful. In the gospel today, Jesus makes the point of that we are searching for honor, for that honor, for respect, to, for people to look to us. But we shouldn't. We should learn humility and how to be humble because that will help us, that humility will help us to serve better, to be better servants. And that's the point of the gospel today. The doctors who make their predictions and tell us all these things that are going to happen, you know, we have to take a, a good look at, at our own selves and our lives. You know, what are we doing? Sometimes we do things without thinking, right? And we need to stop and think. Sometimes we seek revenge or we get angry, right? We need to humble ourselves so that we don't react in those ways. You know, life, of course, is full of challenges and we will want to seek revenge or we'll feel disheartened or we'll feel that we're not enough. We'll feel down and low. And people make us feel that way. But those people are ignorant. In the face of that ignorance, what do we do? We come to church every Sunday. We let the good news into our hearts to become part of us, to help us in our works. Because we are called, we have a duty to listen. And that's the hard part sometimes, right? To listen to other people to see things from their perspective. But that humility by listening will help us to be better, to be better people, to be better servants, right? To serve better. We don't want to have regrets later and feel, you know, when we do feel those times where we, we give into greed or ignorance or temptation to for revenge and negativity. We have to show love. We have to understand love by humbling ourselves, by being patient, really listening to the other people in our lives, to see things from their perspectives. That will help us. Before we receive Eucharist, each Mass, the body of Jesus, the priest says, the peace of the Lord be with you, always. And you respond, and with your spirit, and then the priest says, the peace, let's share a sign of peace. That peace is humility. Right? When we show peace, this is an example of humility. Humility within us. It means that we are actually accepting Jesus' body into us. Jesus himself is the perfect example, model of humility. And that is a virtue that he shares with us, that he gives us. And he wants us to be humble, to show humility, because that is what's going to help us on our journey home to heaven when our life here is done. We long for that. We long to join our Father in heaven, to fully feel his love, his goodness, his kindness, his mercy, and to spread that. We do that through, we share that through our humility. And it is so important for us to understand and to never forget that the peace of the Lord it's so important, and it's so important for us to show humility to receive that peace. It's important because our time here on earth 
It could be short. It could be long. But we don't know. Right? We don't know how long our journey here will be. Just this past week, our deaf community lost a wonderful young man. He was 24 years old. He had joined us for World Youth Day when we went to uh, Krakow, Poland, and this was in 2016. What a, a wonderful soldier he was on the pilgrimage. He was so kind, humble, full of love and generosity. And we looked to him and saw Christ within him so very clearly. Recently, he was killed by a hit-and-run driver. Just a week or so ago, 24 years old, so young. This shows us that tomorrow is never guaranteed it's never a promise to us. It's a gift. You know, we experience loss. I've experienced loss of young people a few years ago as well, losing people who are so young. And just reminds us again, tomorrow is never a promise. We never promised a tomorrow. We have to today fully be present, fully be humble so that we can join our Father in a heavenly home. Instead of holding on to anger and bitterness, resentment, those things will not help us on our journey home to the Father. We are called to live each day with humility and serving well our brothers and sisters to live like Christ. Because Christ shows us the way the truth, the life, and the resurrection. And that is the good news. May the peace of the Lord be with you always on your journey in this life. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who is spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Father, we now offer you our prayers for our needs and the needs of the world.
for the Pope's monthly intention that we pray for small and medium-sized businesses in the midst of economic and social crisis. May they find ways to continue operating and serving their communities. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Bishop Sean, that he, as the head of our local church, the Archdiocese of Boston, may help us navigate the challenging and divisive issues regarding the sanctity of life from conception to natural death. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our military, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are sick and in distress in any way, especially those listed in the bulletin, we pray to the Lord. For those who have died, we pray to the Lord. And for the mass intention, for the parishioners of St. Jude, we pray to the Lord. Father, we thank you for hearing our prayers and answering them by your will. Through Christ our Lord, amen.
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May this sacred offering, O Lord, confer on us always the blessing of salvation, that what it celebrates in mystery, it may accomplish in power. Through Christ our Lord, amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For when your children were scattered afar by sin, through the blood of your Son and the power of the Spirit, you gather them again to yourself, so that, that a people formed as one by the unity of the Trinity, May the body of Christ and the temple of the Holy Spirit might to the praise of your manifold wisdom be manifest as the church. And so in company with the choirs of angels, we praise you and with joy we acclaim. You're indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed, and entered willingly into his passion. He took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and eat of it for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it. For this is a chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which he poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. the mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life, in the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. 
Humbly we pray that by taking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered to one by the Holy Spirit. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you, Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant your peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Come. 
from the Holy Ghost, Creator blessed, and in our hearts take up the rest. Come with thy grace and heavenly aid to fill the hearts which thou hast made. To thee we cry, thou heavenly gift of God most high, thou font of life and fire of love, and sweet anointing from above, and sweet our firm, unchanging creed, that thou dost from them both proceed, that thou dost from them both proceed. Praise we the Lord, Father. Let us pray. Renewed by this bread from the heavenly table, 
we beseech you, Lord, that being the food of charity, it may confirm our hearts and stir us to serve you and our neighbor. Through Christ our Lord. We have a few announcements. Father Gerald, thank you so much for being with us today. We really appreciate your presence and celebrating with us. Thank you so much. And you should stay and meet the people. Say hello after Mass. They would love to meet you. We'll be in the back of the church. It's important that the deaf community go back and meet Father Gerald, please. Thank you very much. Uh, announcements. First, let's see. This evening, we have youth ministry. Uh, that will be from 6 to 8 o'clock, and we will meet in the parking lot. All are welcome. Please join us. We have a good time. We're going to be discussing World Youth Day of 2023. Also, we have religious education classes beginning September 18th, which is a Sunday. And that's from 9.20 to 10.20 Sunday morning. So it's right between the 8.30 Mass and the 10.30 Mass. Okay, that's when religious education begins. If you would like to join us, please register. And you can do that on our website. StJudeWaltham.org. Uh, on the left-hand column, there is a button to click for registration, and you'll create your own account uh, with the church. It's pretty cool. It's uh, it's it's great that you can uh, you'll be able to access and see schedules and everything you're registered for. Um, you so you sign up for your account, it gets approved by us, and then you'll be able to go ahead and register for religious education class. We're all learning. If you need any help with this process, let us know. Um, it's helping us become more organized. Any questions, again, concerns, please don't be afraid to contact me, uh, or Father Jeremy, or Colleen in, at the office. And we're looking forward to relig religious education this year. We're very excited. I'll let you know it's going to include uh, sign language lessons. So uh, we're going to have uh, children who are deaf, those who aren't deaf. It's going to be, it's going to be, it's, it's going to be a really wonderful experience. This afternoon, we have our healing mass. Our monthly healing mass will be at 3 o'clock. And this healing mass is for people who would like to receive the sacrament of anointing of the sick, the anointing uh, for people who are, have been sick, uh, chronic illness, or going to have surgery, or any, anything like that. Please, you're very welcome. It is a beautiful mass. Please come be with us at 3 o'clock today. And there's much more information in the bulletin, so please grab one on your way home today. Thank you. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks, Thanks be God. to God.